Well, good afternoon once again, class. Um, we're going to continue on our discussion on flow. Um, just backtrack a little bit. What did we talk about or what did we discuss with flow last week or earlier this week and last week? What do we know about flow? What do we know? Words that would remind us. No, words that remind you of flow, which were, give me one. Hmm? Zone. zone, being in the zone, and that's that's one of the words, and then we covered that a little bit. Anything else? Peace. Peace. We'll touch a little bit about that, not quite saying exactly like that. We'll say a little bit about peace. Anything else? What is flow? Like super focused on whatever this activity or thing is, and you're like totally concentrated on it, not anything else. Okay, so like an optimized state, okay. huh? Tunnel vision. Hmm. If that's the way you understand it, but not quite tunnel vision. But yes, I can see. You know, I'm totally focused on one thing, so that could be, but. Tunnel vision tends to be a little negative, negative sometimes, you know, when you said that. But yes, if, that, if, that's what, if that's what you connect to it, that's fine. So we've got hyper focus or extremely focused on an activity, leisure activity or work activity. Oh. Where are we most likely to find flow? Leisure. Okay, so we've got leisure activities that we're totally focused on, and you all share it with me in the, one of the assignments opportunities or times when you experience flow and experiences you were looking to have with flow. Okay. So, people who are engaged in flow from what we understand, producing activities do so in the intrinsic enjoyment of that particular activity. Intrinsic, what do we mean by that? Internal, right? So it's, it's for the joy of doing, the reward for doing that activity on its own in itself. Okay, not to impress the neighbor, not to impress the boss, because the reward is the actual activity itself. So when you get the, the best score on you know, Call of Duty, right? Uh, is it, does it score? Does Call of Duty score? Yeah. It does? Okay, because I... <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I was going to say like Miss Pac-Man or something like that, but that's, that's dating myself. But, um, but it's because... There's no money involved, right? Nobody's going to come in and open your door and go, congratulations, you got the high score. You know, free college. No, nobody's going to do that. But it's because you want to do it, and the reward is beating the game, the computer itself. Okay? So, extrinsic would be what? I'm trying to impress somebody. <coughs> right? <laughs> right? I want you to know that I'm good at this. Okay? So, I'm trying to impress you. And it's not necessarily the reward is if you go, that's, you did real good on that, okay? Flow, now mind you, it can enter cross. I mean, it can be, but for the most part, we're looking at activities that is own reward. Okay, so flow typically doesn't occur in a normal eight to five day. That's a work day, school day. It occurs outside of work or school. Now I have here, this is your normal eight to five mind. Okay. We have duality, self-control. Your attention will wander between eight and five. Um, time conscious. There's an internal talking that goes on. There's confusion that comes along with some of that too. Negative emotions and stress can accumulate when you're in your eight to five mind. Right? This is going to school every day. It's duality. What we mean by that? To be aware of yourself and the environment as two separate objects. I'm walking through the class, right? I realize that I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm here with you, but I'm not part of. But flow does what? You become one with the activity. You are immersed in that. You don't see yourself outside of the activity, okay? But in your eight to five brain, I'm at this job, I'm on this, I'm in this class. Now you can become immersed in a class, but that's 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 it has to be something I think lends itself to something we are more on the if we were in a performance-based class, like if it was a band or 
um, or speech class or something we would do, or, or theater. I think it would be easier in those kind of classes. Or whatever your major is, and we were just doing an experiment and we're down in where you can lose yourself because you're so interested in a topic. You know, like I would hope you'd be one day in this class, that'd be awesome, right? But that's where we talk about duality. Self-control, you're consciously directing your actions. I'm gonna sit in this chair. I wanna, wanna check my messages on my phone. I'm going to write these notes, all right? You are having, and we're gonna to get to it, when it talks about that whole self-talk, but I will do this now, I will do this next. You are controlling what's going on. In flow, is that happening? No, okay. Um, attention wanders. They're eight to five in class, attention can wander. Oh man, I got, what did I park? Uh, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh, wow, I got it. I got to hopefully he lets class out early because I got to get to the TC before, right? Oh, man, and I, you know, they scheduled me to work today, and I, if I don't have enough time after class, I won't be able to eat until your mind is wondering. I could be talking about all kinds of stuff in your mind. You hear womp, 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 and, and that does you hear because your mind is wandering, okay? Um, time conscious. Class gets out at 445. 4.45, you better not, not a minute over. Okay, you know, 4.46, you better, don't be trying to like that, right? Right? You're very time conscious. Then flow, do you, do you, can you lose yourself in time? Right? But you're not lost. It's just time seems to just slow down. And you don't realize it's passing because you're, what, immersed in that activity. Right? Um, and flow cannot, doesn't have necessarily to last hours at a time. It could last for 15 minutes, it could last for five minutes. I think that's one of the misconceptions. You know, there's only flow from doing it for an hour. No, give me flow for five, 10 minutes. Now, I think it's good when you can be in that state of mind for an hour, that's kind of cool, all right? Um, the internal talk, hold on. And here's one I'm gonna get onto. It says flow, flow, the concept of flow, the, the mind, state of mind of flow, Merges action, emerges awareness, and emerges the sense of self. Right? It merges those three things. You can lose the feeling of consciousness. You can lose the fact you're controlling your actions. But you don't lose yourself. You just don't have to think about it. You're not having that self-reflective like, am I gonna, should I, would I? Now, in that activity, if you play a video game, it almost becomes so what natural no one tells you to move left right it just you you move according to what you see right you're playing an instrument you're hearing it you know the notes you you know what i'm saying you're not going should i whatever it becomes like natural so you're not going should i have done that is that the right thing i should have done because in our non-flow state we get in a state where we have we're trying to analyze everything we're saying and doing right and don't anybody know people who do that don't do anything to analyze everything and then you get stuck, your paralysis. So you got paralysis by analysis, right? You 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 have you have and now analyze this thing all the way down to whatever, but you've done nothing. Anybody guilty of that anytime? You know? So that's that's your eight to five brain doing that. Not your flow brain. Flow brain, flow brain is happening. Okay. So um attention wanders, you daydream, you lack focus, um, time conscious, flow, attention is never an issue because you're totally absorbed in the activity. Time seems to fly or stand still. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the internal talk, that self-reflection and conscious, non-flow state of mind, that analysis by paralysis by analysis. Flow is associated with enjoyment. Those that participate in flow activities might enjoy some enhancement of physical and mental health. So. Flow, that out of mind. But you're not out of your mind, but you're not hanging out in your mind. You know what I'm saying? So oneness, I have one with this activity. Okay, we've got loss of self and not losing, I don't know who I am. You are immersed in this whatever activity is. Time flies. I, once a week, I was driving from here to Auburn. 
I, and there were times when I couldn't get the flow because my radio was acting up, right? Um, rain, there was bad weather. Um, the best time of flow was when I got on the 85, right? Because between sometimes 231, there's too much going on and get Taylor Road and Pipe Road and all that. I don't know, y'all don't know about it. Anyway, so, and by the time I get to 85, if there's a clear stretch, there are moments, right? There are moments where it's like, oh, I'm already at 51. Yes. Okay. All right. Talk destroys it. So if you're in flow, if someone goes, hey, did you hand me that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. But what, what time is it? How long have I been sitting here? Well, you let me do it this long? What? Huh? Right. Talk destroys it. Even the inner talk will destroy it. If you're consciously making, oh, 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 then you're out of flow. Clarity of action. You know, when you sit down, when you get behind the wheel of the car, we know exactly what our goals are. Remember we talked about, that's one of the concepts, that's one of the, the characteristics, it's clearly defined. I'm going to score the highest score. I'm going to kill as many people as I can kill in this game. You know, I guess Call of Duty is kill as many you can kill, right? Um, acceleration, like, woo, yes, right? And discharge stress. Here, it's a good place to be. And you, some of you said, hey, I experienced that flow state. You weren't mad when you got out of it, right? Hopefully, hopefully you were like, this was good, I could do this. So flow, merges action, you lose the feeling of consciously controlling your actions, and you don't really lose yourself, you just lose that control piece where you're not consciously thinking about what you're doing next, all right? So flow and mindfulness. Now we're going to take you back a little bit to the days of uh, general psychology. Because we talked about mental health, we talked about physical health, and there were two studies that were done that talked about flow and mindfulness. A study at Massachusetts General Hospital found that, found that 40 minutes of meditation thickens part of the cerebral cortex. 40 minutes of meditation can, can thicken the cerebral cortex. Now, where is our cerebral cortex responsible for? Go back to Jen's site. Now, I've got the note up here, but what do you think? It's where our attention is located and our sensory information processing is located. So the parietal lobe, that's where touch, pain, um, the, the designation of known temperatures, um, the sense of where, you, where your limbs are, you know, where my hands are, um, Taste, smell, hearing, sight. That's all in the cerebral cortex. Vision, cerebral cortex, and the occipital lobe. The frontal lobe, it's the heat part here. Speaking, muscle movements, the ability to make plans. Temporal lobe, here. State of flow, meditation. Losing ourselves for a moment. 40 minutes. And here's what they found in another study. And the at the University of California, San Francisco, teachers were taught meditation techniques to use for 30 minutes or less per day. These teachers had the equivalent mood improvement of those who only took antidepressants. So 30 minutes a day or less. That means we're not talking about an hour long sitting out there going home, oh, right? We're talking about 30 or less every day. Equivalent mood improvement of those who took only antidepressants. And remember when we started the class off, we talked about um, Mindfulness with uh, Martin Siegelman, and he had patients where he had them do a journal of a, thank, a gratitude journal. They were dealing with depression. So those that had the gratitude journal and did the antidepressants had, had a higher, had a, had a better rate of, a better rate or less depression than those that just took straight antidepressants. So there is some merit to this, even on the medical side, saying 
you know, mindfulness, meditation. And then those of you who have me for general sight, we talked about meditation and how it, you know, expands the, the connections in your mind and your brain, your, your memory improves. If your memory improves, we also would think that what else would improve? If you have a better memory, what do you think should improve? Should our grades improve? Maybe. Well, maybe just remembering to do the assignments, <laughs> right? Maybe that would be part of it. Not not just the information, but maybe just remember, hey, right? And that uh, they had video that we showed the cab drivers. We had to memorize all of London, you know, and they knew all the stops, and they had to pass that test, and they showed that there was an actual increase in their in their um, in their brain mass after they had after they um, studied for that particular test. So. The regions that serve motions, thoughts, behaviors, that's also part of our cerebral cortex. Language, that's Broca's area, and we're, 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 ah, I can't talk today. Wernicke's area, and that's all in the parietal lobe. Also movements, making plans. So again, we have a chance to kind of touch back on what we've talked about in uh, general psych. So after six to eight weeks of mindful meditation practice, individuals are better focused, are less anxious, and are more creative, are more compassionate, remember things better, and have less stress. All of this without drugs. Meditation is an inexpensive approach to a scientifically validated approach to increasing the quality of day-to-day -day life. It provides an opportunity for flow experience. It's a huge plus. So if we're dealing with depression, we're dealing with poor grades. So we're dealing with meditation is free. And, and there are there are there are websites, YouTube channels that will walk you. Matter of fact, there is a special on Netflix where this guy left his job and went and hung out with the monks. And he learned how to meditate. Right. And he does speak to those of us who deal with ADHD and ADD, that all that stuff's going on in there. He talked about that about how you have to learn how to, you just can't go in there and try to meditate for an hour. It's not going to happen. But a minute at a time, and add another minute, and add about four, it, it's, a, it's a process. But the rewards are great if you can train yourself to do it. Think if you just learn how to meditate 10 minutes a day, think about the benefits that that will provide you. Flow and academic performance. Engesser and Reinberg conducted two longitudinal studies. We're going back to general psych again. What's a longitudinal study? Over time. Huh? Over time. Over time. So that means they go back and they research and they retest over sort of the same people over a period of time. OK, and this was back in 2008 is when the study was published. They did uh, the first study was 246 students taking a statistics course. Why? I don't know, but <laughs> statistics course um, and they the flow was experienced while solving a revision problem one week prior to the final examination mark or examination work. So flow was experienced while they were going back and rehashing Interesting. Second study, 61 students taking a voluntary French class. Flow class was measured on two occasions during the semester, correlated with the final course grade, uh, which combined a mark for in-class participation with a mark for the final exam. So there was an increase, an improvement, because flow was experienced. So flow in studying appears to have a positive causal effect on academic uh, performance. So we can all go home, right? So we can practice some state of being in a state of uh, flow, flow, flow. My fact, being in a state of flow, if we can achieve that through meditation or through an activity, it can potentially help us academically. And if we can do it in a class, it'll definitely potentially help us academically. If you, if you agree with that, say yes. If you question that, say, I don't know. Because here it is. You knew it was a setup. That's why you didn't say it. You knew it was a setup. Positive.
positive effect experienced in study activities in the mid of a semester predicts better end of semester grades across the board. Okay, so they said controlling for previous semester grades. So it's possible that the positive effects were more helpful than being in a state of flow. The positive effects of getting better grades, reviewing the information, might have been what caused their grades to improve overall, not just the fact that they experienced a flow state. So it may not really, it may not be a direct promoter of academic um, performance. I like to think that if we found the ability to get in that state of mind on a regular basis, I think we would see some improvements. Okay, so here's one. This question. Can flow be negative? What do you think? Show hands. You think flow can be negative? Hands up. You think flow, there's no way flow can be negative, raise your hand. If you're kind of like, eh, it depends, raise your hand. All right, so what could be negative? How could it be negative? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think I mean like the actual act of flow can be negative. I was thinking more along the lines of like, say you just have a tendency to focus on or hyper focus on these things and then it negatively affects other aspects of your life because you're not doing does that make sense yeah like if you get into like the state of flow of playing a video game and you lose track of time but then you miss something important yeah. because you're just in flow that so, too much time goes by. yeah so like i don't think the act itself and like being in that state i don't think it's negative as like what it does for you because of what we just talked about mm -hmm. but i think maybe you know, how it, how it can affect other aspects of life. So, playing video games, doing some of this leisure activity for an extended amount of time. Yeah. I think sometimes, like, say, like, really stressed out or, like, have anxiety about something and then you kind of forget about it because, like, you're in a, you're experiencing flow and then you, like, come back, then, like, that can, like, hurt more because, like, all those negative feelings kind of come rushing back at once. Hmm. So you think flow could be, I can go and immerse myself in an activity as an escape. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I think that that is more related if you are depressed. Yeah. I don't think if you are healthy and you're doing what you should do, the flow won't take over in that way. But if you have a tendency for depression, mm -hmm. you want to escape reality. Of course, you want to play video games for 20 hours and forget to eat and sleep. Okay. Now, remember I shared in the last section with mindfulness, and it probably would have been just as good as talking about flow, when I talked the, the article I shared with you about the Tetris effect, and the uh, university professor was playing um, Grand Theft Auto for like 20 some odd hours, yoda, 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 yoda. <laughs> and how he was immersed in that for, I think it's like a day and a half, he just played that all day, and then so when he leaves to go somewhere the first thing he saw was a cop car and he approached a cop car because he knew what because you get more points mm -hmm. and grand Auto if you drive a car so the thing what stopped him was the fact that he saw his own reflection in, in the mirror in the window but he was all set from being immersed in an activity for multiple hours he became one with grand theft auto mm -hmm. right it sounds like in like the, I guess like mid early 2000s, like around the time of like all the school shooting and stuff and a bunch of like really religious parents were like video game, like killing video games are bad because they're causing an increase in school shootings and violence. Interesting you say that. Um, remember the movie Happy? Remember the uh, middle school, uh, the speaker, Michael Pritchard, the heavyset guy, had to just, you know, tell us how you feel. Well, I had lunch with him, um, probably around the time, around the time he did this. And he was working with local police departments. And he said, and he shared with me, he said, video games that they 
have found that some of those shooters, their accuracy is at the level of a Marine sharpshooter. They've never been in combat, but their accuracy, especially when they have an actual Marine sharpshooter. Okay. Two, when they talk them down from being on these roofs or whatever, or they don't say, stop shooting. You know what the call word is? Game over. So I don't know if it was Flo that did it, but you guys pinpointed it. Flo has potential for maladaptive or even evil use. And they, if, if you look at the inherent definition of flow, flow can be experienced in antisocial activities. So any of those movies where you get that creeper person, you know, <laughs> you know, all hyper involved in something that's probably not so cool for society. So a number of studies in identified maladaptive use of flow in three domains. Let's see if you guys pinpointed it. Internet and gaming addiction. Ding, 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 ding. Two, risk taking behaviors. Three, killing in combat. Um, anybody ever seen the movie Hurt Locker? You ever saw the movie? Um, it's, it's a recent movie. It's not like it's 50 years old. It's, just, uh, it's based upon a guy uh, going over uh, the Middle East to fight. Um, he always wanted to be deployed because he, what, what happened, he got addicted to his own adrenaline. It was a adrenaline junkie. He'd always had to be there. He was a sniper. Um, but that's where he was coming. He couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't associate back at home with his wife and kids. He couldn't do that. That became no longer something he was comfortable doing. He was more comfortable in the desert, in the, in the sand, you know, trying to kill the enemy. Um, that's pretty maladaptive, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, think about the things that, the things that we could get absorbed in that would be a bit antisocial or actually could be fun. I mean, there are people who get addicted to that state, certain states doing certain things that we wouldn't consider necessarily bad. Right? Um, what if I just like to draw? I just sit and draw all day long. I can't. <laughs> you know, just drawing all day long. That's not, but if I if I'm so immersed in my drawings, that becomes my reality. Yeah, that might be a problem. Um, we have to sometimes get my son off the computer. He's a He's 10. We have to sometimes say no more Minecraft. No more um, what's the other one? Take this guy back to playing it. Um it's not Minecraft is shooting. Um <coughs> Fortnite. Fortnite, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I you know I actually signed back in, you know, and I played against my daughter and some of her friends, and I was stuck in a ditch for like half the game. But anyway, the storm got me. <laughs> but but but, <laughs> but um when when my son would come to me and talk to me about what's going on inside of a video game like it's real right i mean i can walk in the house he'd be on the couch because you know they don't have homework these days so he's just doing this and i can walk by i make noise when i walk in the house right i walk back by i can change clothes and then come back and walk past him again he'll look up oh hey dad what you get here He is not even, I mean, I could, I could have set the house on fire. Right? <coughs> right? Um, so there's times he's like, well, you know, he's talking about all these. I'm like, look, I don't even know what you're talking about. One, two, let's come out of that for a second. Let's talk about some reality stuff, you know? Um, but, you know, that's, we can all be, you know, we all think uh, like college football and all that kind of stuff. We get immersed in that during the season and thinking that's going to cause the world to, to, to crumble on his, you know, his axis if somebody doesn't win or saving doesn't win, you know, like I could give a damn, but you know, like, you know, but, but you would think because people all immerse in those things, I don't know that's flow, but I know it's annoying. Okay, so we've got an activity. 
I got you in three groups. And here's the task of the group. I want you to apply your knowledge of flow to a real world situation to support youth and young adults. One group will have high school, one group will have middle school, and one group will be college freshmen. Okay, so you're going to identify and describe what kind of activity are you going to have, whatever a group of students do, what are the rules of that activity, what are the instructions for that particular group, what they have to do before school, after school, once a week, once a day, what have you, what is the goal of this particular activity, and how do you know if the activity indeed facilitated flow? How do you know? How are you going to evaluate that? How are you going to ask them? Are you going to, how are you going to, because you can't ask them in the middle of it because that breaks up flow, right? Um, so how will you evaluate this? Each student in your group will have to define one of those things on a blank piece of paper. So basically, I have a stack of papers that will be high school, a stack of be middle school, a stack of be college. And we have time, like somebody to kind of put it all in one, but you're going to get graded on your description of this. Any questions of the of the assignment? OK, here's your group breakdown. All right, uh, group one is Alan, Nikki, and Savannah. My apologies because the other people weren't for one aren't here today. So it's Alan, Nikki, Savannah. Group two, Delaney, DeAndre, Peter, Abby, Trinity, I'll have you go to group one since we're a little lopsided. So Trinity, you're in group one. <clears throat> and group three is Garrett, Megan, it's Edwards, and Antonio and Kayla. Okay, so find a spot and then I will assign you once you get together, either you're gonna be high school, middle school, or college. Remember what? Remember we we talked about flow. This is our third day talking about flow. You need the number. You need the, the numbers again. Alan, you're one. Nikki, you're one. Savannah, you're one. Trinity, you're one. Delaney, you're two. DeAndre, you're two. Peter Garrett, you're two. Abby Polk, you're two. And Garrett, you're three. Megan, you're three. Ms. Edwards, you're three. Antonio, you're three. And Kayla, you're three. All right. So, what do you know about flow? That means you can use your notes. What is the activity? What are the rules of the activity? What are you going to tell that population? The goal, everybody's goal should be some of the same, right? Is what? Flow to a real world situation. How are they going to achieve that? All right, so how will you evaluate? That might be the toughest question. How will you evaluate whether or not they get to the flow state? So I'll start here. High school, middle school, college freshman. Like all the bullet points underlined, identify and describe, like on the same sheet of notebook paper. If you have the activity, you write out the activity. And if Garrett has, he provides the rules. Ms. Edwards might say, here are the instructions. And Megan might say, uh, here are the goals. And then um, Mr. Showers will say, here's how we know. Now, you guys are working together to come up with the answers to this. Yes, ma'am. Do you want one piece of paper? I want one from each one of you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we all put everything. And can you zoom in? Huh? Can you zoom in? Can I zoom in? Let me see. If not, I can get to that TV. Where there was a serious point that supports the zone girl. Sorry. That's okay. I'll keep them. Sir. And click on it. Is that better? Sir, do you want us to write everything or just the, the new? Right. You guys are middle school. 
Okay. And then whatever of the bullet points that you have been assigned, okay. you write that out. Now, if we have time, I will love it on one piece of paper. But I need to see your contribution. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And some of you, because groups aren't the same size, if you're the smallest group, yeah. you guys might have a little bit more. You might have to split some things up. But everybody should have at least one thing to describe. One, two, three, four, five. Five things. So, four, four. Middle school is like. Middle school, sixth grade, eighth grade. I'll even let you do ninth grade. Executive summarizes. 
So it's first instructions and a piece of the leg. So it's a little bit of a to take your 15 minute minimum walk. And this doesn't have to be an hour long program. It can be 15 minutes, it can be 20 minutes, it can be a daily thing you ask them to do, a weekly thing you ask them to do. But the biggest question is how do you how do you know they get how do you monitor them? How do you how do you know aha they they experience flow? Right? How do you know that? That's the that evaluation is the tricky part. Because you really can't ask them during the activity daylight hours. Okay, but then you got to give me the more instructions. What are they? What are they going to do? What are they? What are they? What are you asking for? What are we going to do? Because that's more specific. But then how? And then the trickiest part is that last question: How do you know? And you can't really ask them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because you uh, talk to them throughout. <laughs> And will it take more than one time? Here's a here's, here's something to ask yourself. Will it take more than one time for them that participate in this activity to realize if they experience flow or not? That's valid, right? It might take three times, four times, once a week. Twenty times, who knows? I would say more. I feel like it might take three times to get out of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Thank you, but yeah, Doc. Yeah. 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 K. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye